Yo, what's up? All of us are familiar with the extent to which we've been socially conditioned by parenting, by the offer of various forms of punishments and rewards as we grow up, and by exposure to media such as television and movies. Um, but as we mature, it's easy to be aware of the effect of prohibitions, of what it is um, we fear to do, or what we've been told that we should be afraid to do. That's relatively easy. And some behaviors instead are solicited from us by positive reward, by um, the expectation that these opinions, these beliefs, will be rewarded, will be approved of by parental figures, by society at large. And people can build up quite a burden of unexamined beliefs, of values they've never really challenged or thought through the effects of or utility of in this way um, from their social conditioning. And I do think that one of the joys of middle age is that we encounter, challenge, examine, and change these views. And we change as characters ourselves. Um, Hollywood movies tend to celebrate the change in character you have in your teenage years, but there are some changes in character that come with real maturity much later in life. Uh, it would be very easy for me to repeat the um, sort of nonsensical myth that we live only for our own children. This is one of these views that's solicited from people and rewarded. But I think very few people pause to really think through what the implications of this would be. Um, I just pause to mention, digress to mention, I am happy that I'm now in contact with so many vegan parents. Before I had a YouTube channel, when I merely had a blog, the main reason for me to create that blog was to get in touch with other vegan parents, vegans who had kids of any kind. And I was sending out tons of messages to the other bloggers. You know, most of them were like food blogs <laughs> saying, oh, hey, you know, are you a vegan parent? I'm a vegan parent too, kind of thing. And trying to get a, a group started and what have you. Um, those days are behind me now, but I'm fundamentally very glad that there are so many vegan parents talking to me on Patreon, getting my content either as videos or as uh, podcasts or what have you. That's wonderful for me. That's really a, a niche I've always been seeking. And obviously, the responsibilities of parenthood bring with them a very different perspective on the world from what you find from uh, single or childless people at any age, whether they're, you know, teenagers middle age, what have you. I appreciate the gravity of that worldview that comes with having and raising kids. And, you know, the different way of thinking about the future. Earlier this year, I did the paperwork to join the Army, the Canadian military. Huge decision in my life. Huge sacrifice in many ways. And it wasn't hypothetical. I actually did it. I signed up and I went through the testing procedure and there are reflections about that on this channel. Uh, none terribly profound. If I were to say, I did this for my daughter, that would be a kind of corny stereotype trope, such as everyone's used to hearing on TV and in movies. And whatever. Oh, I did it all for my kids. I did this all because I love my daughter so much, and that everything in my life, I am living for my daughter, etc. But if you really pause to think about it, that's a terrible thing to say. It would be terrible to turn to your child one day in the future and say, I joined the army because of you. It would be a terrible thing to tell your child, I could have been a scholar, I could have been an intellectual, I could have done humanitarian work. There were all these other things I wanted to do in my life, but for you, because of you, I joined the army. Terrible. Now, apart from being terrible, is it true or untrue? Really, I mean, I think even in a situation as extreme as joining the army, I think actually if you pause and think about it deeply in your own life, it's untrue. There's a whole constellation of considerations that go into making a decision like that, including what wars are currently ongoing. <laughs> I mean, to me, there's a, there's a big difference between the Vietnam War and the current wars that are being fought in Syria, Iraq, um, you know, the conflict between Ukraine and Russia, you know, to me, there are real, hard, moral, ethical questions that go into asking, 
are you going to fight this war? Are you going to fight the wars that seem likely in the next five years? You know, we can't predict everything, but right? hard decisions. Nothing to do with my daughter. My daughter didn't decide that. So on the one hand, it's sort of morally odious. On the other hand, I really question in every case to what extent that it's true. Uh, obviously, you know, some decisions you make are purely for your kids. Why did I go to Germany in December? I went to Germany to visit my daughter. It was 100%. In that case, sure, of course. There are some decisions I make totally and purely for my daughter. But I point out, it's often worthwhile to contrast the gender binary in these problems because it reveals a more subtle hypocrisy. Nobody thinks it's insulting for me to say that what I'm doing in my life and my career right now is entirely a sacrifice for my daughter, is for my daughter, is about my daughter. Nobody thinks that. But if we turn it around, if I were to say the same things about my wife, now my ex-wife, it would actually be quite insulting. To say my wife lives only for my daughter, that she does these things only for my daughter. Hold on, why would you say that about my ex-wife? My ex-wife is a real intellectual. She's got a child, but she also makes decisions and does things and has ambitions for reasons of scholarship, career, you know, to write a book, to publish something meaningful, to make the world a better place. My wife does meaningful things for meaningful reasons. Legally, we're still not divorced, so legally she still is my wife, by the way. I misspoke, but it doesn't matter. Wife, ex-wife, we could use either term in this context. Um... You know, in some ways, if somebody said, oh, to my, my ex-wife, oh, but of course, uh, you're, you're, you just do all this for your daughter. This is all, it would be rather insulting. No, no, the point would be to insist she's a parent, but she also has serious moral concerns, political concerns, personal ambitions, you know, research ambitions, uh, etc. She's a person of substance in the world. And yet for a man... It's become this corny Hollywood trope to say, oh, it's all, it's all because I love my kids. It's all for my daughter. I only did this for my kids. I'm only alive for my kids. I'm only living for my kids. I'm devoted to my kids. Okay? Um, I think it's worth challenging. I think it's worth thinking clearly about. Because at the end of the day, what you're doing in doing something for your kids is you're abdicating responsibility for it. You're saying that who I am as a parent deletes who I am as a human being. And some people may feel that way. You may really feel like your potential as an individual has been snuffed out by having kids. You may feel that you didn't get to be who you wanted to be or you don't get to be yourself who you really are because of your parents. You may feel that way. You can talk about that feeling. But this idea that having a kid is a mission that is the reason why you're alive and that it explains these other decisions um, in a subtle way, I think it is kind of sick and distorting. And it's worthwhile thinking about what position it puts the kid into. This was for you, kid. This is because of you, kid. That's, that's not a burden you want to put on the next generation. Now, to me, this raises a somewhat broader question of the way in which Hollywood movies and similar media shape our expectations of life on Earth. Um, I am not like any character you've ever seen in a movie or a TV show. And that's not a boast. That doesn't mean I'm a good person or a great person or even an interesting person. It just means that in general they don't make movies about people like me. I'm the sort of guy who went to learn Pali in Laos and Cambodia. Pali is an obscure language. I'm the sort of guy who went to learn Cree in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is an obscure place, and Cree is an obscure language. The things that motivated me to do that, the combination of humanitarian and research concerns, they are just not things that show up in a Hollywood movie. Okay? So... When we set our minds to this task of challenging the preconceptions that are inculcated into us, and when we apply them to other people, when we meet other people, you know, don't ever say to me, oh, 
you know, but Eisel, you're you're living for your daughter. You're doing this for your daughter. This is made worthwhile by your vindicate for your daughter. You can ask me that as a question. You can ask me, you know, did you join the army for your daughter? I'm not offended by the question. But really, if you think about because I have an answer. I have an answer for that question. It might not be the answer you're expecting, right? But if you tell it to me as a fact, I do think that's offensive. And the only reason why I'm not in the Army right now is the incompetence of the Canadian bureaucracy. And back when I was in Toronto years and years ago, I heard about guys who tried to join the Canadian Army, and the bureaucracy was so incompetent that they ended up joining the American Army instead. I guess they have, you know, uh, relatives in the U.S. They have some connection by blood. Technically, I don't know how that's possible for different types of people. You know, if you're a Canadian citizen, how you join the U.S. I've never looked into it. But, I mean, I never thought I would consider that option. But at the end of that experience, I realized, boy, if I actually want to join an army, I would have to do exactly that. I would have to join the U.S. Army. Who in their right mind would tell a child... Your father went off to Afghanistan to kill or be killed for you. I mean, you know, even for a child born and raised in Afghanistan, that's a really troubling message. But for a kid in Canada or France or Germany to tell them your father went to put bullets into human beings for you. I don't like where that's coming from. I don't like where it's going. Now, if you tell your kid your father went because he really thought there was an important difference between democracy and theocracy. Your father went because even though he had a background in history and books, even though he was a skeptic about war, even though he'd studied some of the worst disasters in the history of warfare, atrocities, wars that ended badly, even humanitarian interventions that were disasters, even though he'd done all that study, he knows the bottom line is, life on Earth is not an academic debating club. And with some groups, like ISIS, the problem is not going to be resolved by sitting down at a boardroom table and having a debate. Some problems, some issues, some questions in the history of the world do get resolved by brute force. Whether or not you or anyone else in an academic debating room think that brute force is justified. That's what's going to answer that question. So much you could say, right? Now, as it happens, I didn't go into the service, as stated, but the whole puzzle I've just outlined for how you would justify to a child that your father has joined the army to go kill other human beings, how much harder is it to justify if that father gets killed? if that father comes home in a casket. What a terrible thing to tell a child, we did this for you. So look, I'm recording this. It's a somewhat delayed reply to a comment I got from one of my fans within Patreon, where he made statements like this, like, well, you know, you say this and that about your life, but really you're living for your daughter and you're doing all this for your daughter. And I said, look, don't tell me that. I'm not a character out of some movie. I'm not. And, you know, that's just because they don't make movies about people like me. Some people are. You can meet some people who kind of remind you of a character from a movie. You know, <laughs> fiction is made to resemble reality, right? I'm not on an ego trip about it. But, you know, do not put corny Hollywood sentiment onto me and expect me to wear it as a hat. That's not who I am. That's not what I'm about. I'm being really real with you guys. I'm being really honest. And one day I hope my own daughter can see these videos and know what kind of a man I was. But I'm, I'm not trying to be anyone else. Not for her, not for you. So when I have the honesty to tell you how terrible my life is, how terrible the decisions I'm making are, what the stakes are, what the consequences are, don't ignore that. Don't brush that aside and disregard that in order to evoke some trope familiar from a Hollywood movie. So that's not who I am.